welcome back. Welcome back to the Clem ASMR YouTube channel and in today's video we are going to be looking at the top 20 Formula 1 facts because the Formula 1 season is now upon us. I will apologise, this video was meant to go out on Friday but I really didn't have time to record it at all. There was also no video out on Friday. Typically it's Road to Glory episodes on a Friday but I've stopped playing FIFA for the time being. I think I mentioned in one of my previous videos I'm not enjoying it so I've taken the decision to only play it when I want to and only record it when I want to. I'm taking that on myself to I apologise if you like the Road to Glory content. It's just not for me at the minute. And I'd rather do videos like this where I can make it a little bit more relaxing for you guys and talk from the heart. So I'm a big, big, big fan of F1, if you guys didn't already know. And so, that leads me to wanting to record this. If you like short form content as well, please follow me on TikTok. Again, follow me on YouTube, because I post some shorts there. From next, well, from today, as I'm recording, which is Sunday onwards, I will have started posting some regular short form content, maybe once a day or once every two days. I feel like I do it on every day that I don't upload a video, which is Wednesday, no, which is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is when I tend to upload. So, without further ado, I don't want to waste time, I want to get into these. So, number one, Lewis Hamilton holds the record for most pole positions in Formula One, which means pole positions is the front runner, the number one position. Renowned for his remarkable speed and precision on track. Lewis Hamilton has secured his place in Formula 1 history by clinching the record for the most pole positions. This achievement underscores his ex exceptional talent and unwavering dedication to the sport, solidifying his status as one of the most influential figures in Formula 1. I believe he is also the best driver of all time, soon to be overtaken by Max if he stays in the sport long enough. We all know that he's not the biggest fan of F1, even though he's absolutely fucking outrageous in it. I can see him taking up other sports. Soon. Anyway, Ayrton Senna, Ayrton Senna is widely regarded as one of the greatest Formula 1 drivers of all time. True. Ayrton Senna's legacy in Formula 1 is unparalleled as he is celebrated as one of the most exceptional drivers to have graced the sport. His extraordinary skill, fierce determination and charismatic personality left an indelible mark on Formula 1, earning him widespread admiration and respect from fans, drivers and the racing community themselves. Number three, the youngest driver to win a Formula One championship is Sebastian Vettel. Sebastian Vettel made history by becoming the youngest driver to clinch an F1 World Championship. Has that not been beaten by Verstappen? When was this made? Hang on. It still holds true now. Um, so, uh, showcasing his prodigious talent. Oh no, yeah. Showcasing his prodigious talent and remarkable composure on the track. This groundbreaking achievement propelled him into the spotlight and solidified his position as a formidable force. Uh, I do like Sebastian Vettel. Well, did like him since he retired. Michael Schumacher holds the record for the most World Driver Championship titles. Michael Schumacher's unparalleled success is epitomised by his record-breaking seven World Driver Championship titles that has since been broken or since been equalised by Lewis Hamilton, a feat that cements his status as one of the most dominant and accomplished drivers in the history of the sport. Uh, Max Verstappen's on for his third this year if they win it, which they will win it because why not? He was 20 seconds ahead in the first race. Um, the Formula 1 season consists of a series of races known as Grand Prix. The Formula 1 season unfolds through a series of exhilarating races, each known as a Grand Prix, held at iconic circuits around the world. These are high stakes. Uh, it says held at iconic circuits, but like three or four of them are new this year. Like, Las Vegas was made up to do it. Miami was made up a couple of years ago to do it. Um, what else did they do? It was like, 
yeah, that's at least two that have been made anyway. These high stakes, uh, these high stakes events captivate audiences globally, showcasing the pinnacle of automotive engineering and the extraordinary skills of the drivers. Next, I've lost count of how many we've done, by the way. Uh, the Monaco Grand Prix is one of the most prestigious and challenging races in the F1 calendar. The Monaco Grand Prix stands as a crown jewel in the F1 calendar, renowned for its narrow, winding streets and glamorous backdrop. Very true. The iconic race presents a formidable challenge for drivers, demanding exceptional precision and skill as they navigate the treacherous circuit in the heart of Monte Carlo. Very true. I think it is also one of the most boring races, personally. But I also understand it's absolute in history. The Constructors' Championship is awarded to the team with the highest combined points total at the end of the season. So the constructors such as Red Bull or Mercedes or McLaren or Ferrari or... Whoever missed out of that. Aston Martin, then types. What happens is at the end of the season, the two drivers' points are added together. And the highest points equals the constructors. With the title bestowed upon the outfit that amasses the highest combined points total across the season, this accolade underscores the collaborative effort and technical expertise of the team in crafting competitive and high-performing race cars. Next is the iconic Silver Arrows represent the Mercedes-AMG Petronas Formula 1 team. The Silver Arrows, synonymous with speed and precision, serve as the distinctive emblem of the Mercedes-AMG Petronas, Petronas F1 sports team, invoking a rich heritage and a legacy of dominance in Formula 1. This iconic livery embodies the team's pursuit of excellence and their relentless pursuit of victory on the racetrack. So we a little bit, but okay. I mean, they're not very fast anymore, but okay. Uh, the Italian Grand Prix is one of the oldest races in Formula 1 with a rich heritage dating back to 1921. The Italian Grand Prix holds a storied legacy. A storied legacy as one of the oldest and most revered races in Formula 1, steeped in tradition and history. The iconic event held at the historic Monza circuit. I like Monza, I'm a big fan of Monza. Continues to captivate fans with its high-speed thrills and enduring prestige within the realm of motorsport. Fair dues. The Circuit de Spa Flancorchamps is celebrated for its challenging layout and unpredictable weather conditions. Again, I absolutely love Spa. I think it's one of the one of the better circuits on the no, one of the better circuits on the calendar uh, in Belgium, by the way. Uh, so Spa nestled amidst the picturesque Ardennes forest. It's renowned for its undulating terrain, like the first corner, you take a real high hair beam right, down a hill, left, and then back up hill and right, and then left again, it's fucking brilliant. Uh, presenting drivers with a formidable test of skill and bravery. This legendary circuit remains a favourite among fans and drivers alike, revered for its rich heritage and exhilarating racing experiences. The Brazilian Grand Prix is known for its passionate and fervent, fervent, fervent fan base, creating an electrifying atmosphere at the Interlagos circuit. I am not the biggest fan of the Brazil F1 um, or the Brazil Grand Prix. I just don't, I like, I understand it's a good, cool track. I just think it's, I don't know, it's a bit basic for me. It's just too many, uh, 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 ooh, uh, 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 ooh. that's how I feel about it. It's not like, it doesn't captivate me, but anyway, that's just me. The Brazilian Grand Prix boasts a fervent and passionate fan base, infusing the Interlagos circuit with an electrifying atmosphere that reverberates throughout the race weekend. This iconic event stands as a testament to the unwavering enthusiasm and love for Formula One in Brazil, showcasing the sport's global appeal and cultural significance. The United States Grand Prix takes place at the Circuit of Americas in Austin, Texas. Very true, but now they also have Las Vegas and Miami. And I think they're on about giving one to Boston or New York, which I think four in America is bollocks, by the way. Anyway, the United States Grand Prix unfolds at the state-of-the-art circuit of the Americas at a cutting-edge racing facility located in Austin, Texas. This modern and dynamic circuit has become a cornerstone of Formula One's expansion into the American market, captivating audiences with its thrilling races and a vibrant atmosphere. If you 
guys watched Las Vegas last year, by the way, you'll know that it was an absolute farce. It was an absolute mess of an event. They had these black uh, sheets over the fences to stop people that weren't paying for the event to see in. But all you had to do was stretch it and you could see through it. And that's one issue that they had. The second issue is that one of the um, pedestrian footbridges broke. So people couldn't go over it and it forced them through like three casinos before they could get to the event, which to me just screams like they shut it on purpose. And they just forced people through the casinos to try and make more money, which is like pure Las Vegas vibes. And the third issue is that they didn't they didn't weld down the drain covers properly and it broke Carlos Sainz's car. Was it Leclerc's? I think it was Sainz. And he had to have a new engine. So yeah, great. <laughs> Fucking fair. America's fantastic. The Japanese Grand Prix has a rich history and is held at the iconic Suzuka circuit. This isn't facts. This is just like explaining. This is explaining all the tracks. I guess we're explaining all the tracks. The Canadian Grand Prix is renowned for its exhilarating races and vibrant atmosphere at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. 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 The Canadian Grand Prix captivates fans with its high octane races. I don't mind Canada, by the way. And lively ambiance at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. Situated in the picturesque Fuck me, Il Notre Dame in Montreal. This beloved event showcases the fervent, that word again, for Formula One in Canada as spectators flock to witness the thrilling battle on track. Again, I don't mind the Canadian Grand Prix, it's not my favourite. The Australian Grand Prix marks the exciting start of the Formula One season. Hasn't for the past couple of years, but apparently will be next year, 2025. It will be first again. At the Albert Park circuit in Melbourne, the Aussie Grand Prix heralds the eagerly anticipated commencement of a Formula 1 season, igniting excitement and anticipation at the picturesque Albert Park circuit in Melbourne, or Melbourne. This vibrant event sets the stage for thrilling racing action and serves as a captivating showcase of the sport's global appeal and unwavering popularity in Australia. I feel like we've said that sentence about six times, but anyway. I'm just going to briefly go through the rest of these now and just give you the starting thing. The Mexican Grand Prix boasts a festive and vibrant atmosphere at the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez in Mexico City. The Bahrain Grand Prix takes place at the state-of-the-art Bahrain International Circuit in Skir. The Singapore Grand Prix is renowned for its dazzling night race through the illuminated streets of Marina Bay. I am a big fan of Bahrain. I really, really enjoy Singapore. Not the biggest fan of the Mexican one. The Russian Grand Prix unfolds at the Sochi Autodrome, set against the sunny backdrop of the Black Sea. Don't mind Russia. And the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix features a dazzling twilight race at Yas Marina Circuit, offering a mesmerising spectacle on speed and luxury. I'm a big fan of the Abu Dhabi one. They also missed off Azerbaijan, which is at Baku, the British one at Silverstone, the other Italian one that's, where is it, let's, Australian, Japanese, Chinese Grand Prix, which is at the Shanghai International Circuit, em uh, Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, that's the other uh, Italian one, Spanish Grand Prix is at the Circuit, the Barcelona, Catalonia, but Next year is going to be in Madrid, for whatever reason. The Austrian Grand Prix, which is my absolute favourite track of all time. It's the quickest track. I feel like it sets one of the fastest laps. I think you have more racing. I think there's a lot more jeopardy involved in that. And I love it. And that's the Red Bull Ring in Austria. We have the Hungarian Grand Prix at the Hungaro Ring. Hungaro Ring. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Uh, the Dutch Grand Prix at Circuit Zandvoort. That is one of the most iconic tracks on the uh, on the uh, circuit on the uh, calendar. We mentioned Monza, Azerbaijan, Baku, Singapore, US, Mexico, Brazil, Las Vegas, Qatar is at the La Salle Circuit, and obviously we mentioned the Abu Dhabi Circuit. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this like little brief intro introduction into F1. If you guys want more exhilarating facts and just figures and information, please let me know. I might start a series where I go through F1 tracks and go through all the facts and details and name all the corners and fastest laps and most wins, etc. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And I'll catch you later. Goodbye.
。